desperate. Like, I want to get mobbed. He's going to come out and be like, give me all your money. I'm like, dude, you have the wrong guy. I have a dollar 86. He's like, let's go to the ATM. I'm like, bro, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> Fifth Third Bank said no. There's my card. Try your luck. I thought I had a loophole that get out of jail free card that I do not call list. You ever have that? I thought like that was a loophole for the federal debt. No, it's just an awkward conversation. They call up like, do you have the money yet? I said, I want to let you just know I signed up for the do not call list. I'd appreciate if you would not call me anymore. <laughs> He's like, wow, you are a community college moron. <laughs> Didn't you learn anything in your eight credits? I'm like, wow, you got me there. But I did learn this. I learned that I replace every cell in my body every seven years, so technically it wasn't me who took out that student loan. <laughs> Talk to you next week. <laughs> Stuff happens to me, doesn't happen to other people, man. I had an American Express card, had is the operative word there. If you're a week late with the bill, they're on the phone like 801, 805, 807, 809, 811, 815, 817, same friggin' day. And nobody American works at American Express anymore. Did you ever notice that? They call you up, they're like, hello, do you have the money? I'm like, where are you calling from? New Delhi. I'm like, listen, Goofy. I don't know how the mill works in India, but here in America, if I don't have the money at 856, chance are real good, I won't have it at 927. <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely, my friend. Call you back at 1156. <laughs> I got tired of not having the money when they call. Now for every credit card I have, I just buy an instant lottery ticket, try to play a game. You know, like try to like, play Rivers Casino. Think, Do you have the money? I said, I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> Not looking good today, bro. <laughs> but you did win a free ticket. Talk to you right in the middle of dinner. Did you guys ever do this? Today I felt special. I thought I had enough deodorant left to get one more use. Did you ever do that? Like you think you have one more use, but you don't have one more use? Like today, I was like exploded all over the floor in a hundred different pieces. You have to get down and make that little deodorant snowball. You're like, damn, I'm out of deodorant. Almost. <laughs> You're down there sorting through the carpeting like Charlie Sheen on a Saturday night. <laughs> you still don't buy the odor next week. You just scrape your arms with that plastic applicator. You're bleeding, but you're fresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I did my makeup to make myself look older and more tired tonight. How'd I do? <laughs> I know. I've got quite a touch, I know, I know. Yeah, a lot of women, when they get older, you know, they start putting on more and more makeup. They think it's gonna make them look younger. It doesn't make them look younger. It makes them look like transvestites. <laughs> See, I know about this. I'm in menopause. I know about this stuff. <laughs> really, I'm telling you. you know, if you don't know what menopause is like, I'll describe it to you. It's a lot like adolescence, except without all that life ahead of you. <laughs> I mean, I get to go through this and then die? <laughs> what a great deal. My mom is uh, 87. She's a real character, my mom. You know, for as long as I have known my mom, which is her entire life, <laughs> or actually my entire life, <laughs> she has started her day the same way every morning. She reads the obituaries. First thing in the morning, that's how she starts her day, with the dead. And I started doing it too. I think it's hereditary. You know, a lot of people like to read the obituaries, and I have a theory about this. I know why. It's because the obituary language is very soothing. It's very pleasant, very non-confrontational. Everyone's beloved, beloved, beloved. I think someone's lying. Because not everyone is beloved. Harry, husband of Rita, and pain in the ass, is finally dead. Please send all flowers and donations to me. I'll be in Florida where I should have been 15 years ago. <laughs> my mom, my mom, you know, she's got short-term memory loss, which is not really a great thing, but it came in so handy when we were planning a surprise party for her. <laughs> she planned the whole thing with us. She chose the menu, the guest list. And when everyone stood up and yelled surprise, there was no one more shocked than my mother. <laughs> my parents were married for 63 years. My husband and I have, uh, thank you, yeah, it's great. 
My husband and I have been married now for 12 years. Honeymoon's been over for about 13 years. <laughs> We've completely stopped trying to please each other. I don't mean sexually, I mean humanly. <laughs> you know what his latest thing is? He stopped clipping his toenails. I know, what's that about? What, was he false courting me when he was clipping his toenails? <laughs> Making me think he was that kind of guy? <laughs> I hate it, now the bed is a dangerous place. <laughs> All night he's scratching me. It's like sleeping with Howard Hughes without the money. <laughs> I'm no better, I don't care what I look like when I go to bed anymore. You know, I wear an old ripped up t-shirt that someone used to change the oil in my car. <laughs> It takes me longer and longer to get ready for bed every night. You know, I get, I, it takes me like an hour and a half. All I do is moisturize. That's all I have left. I've moisturized for like 90 minutes until my entire head is numb. <laughs> then I have to put in a mouth guard, you know, one of those night guards, because I have so much stress, I grind my teeth and I take it to bed with me, you know? So I have to put in my mouth guard like that. I put it in there. Then I get into bed. Then I open up my nightstand. I take my hand cream out, put a lot of cream on my hand. <laughs> And I take these little cotton gloves, keep the creamer all night, I put them on. Then I take out my foot cream. I put a lot of cream on my feet, especially the heels, put a lot of cream on. I put on these little matching cotton socks that match my gloves. I get really comfortable, snuggle down into the sheets. And one night uh, I looked down at myself and I turned to my husband and I said, uh, honey, uh, you know, if you want to have an affair, you can go right ahead, okay? <laughs> I'll even find someone for you. Take the pressure off of both of us. <laughs> Good night, honey. It's the best I can do. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. How are you? Oh, two people. Good. You sound good. Well, I'm feeling good. Just tell you a little bit about myself. I tell you, first of all, I'm not as hip as I look. <laughs> Don't be fooled. <laughs> I am not hip boy. I party like it's 1899. <laughs> <laughs> now I didn't start out. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. It's my hometown. <laughs> yes, I hated it too. And because uh, yes. I know Cleveland and Jeanette are two rival cities. <laughs> Big That's all we talk about in Cleveland. Those people in Jeanette. <laughs> We're gonna go down there and tip over their cows. <laughs> no, you don't. I think you boo back there, so you don't like Cleveland. Why did you boo there? Jeanette. Huh? Oh, cause the big rivalry with Jeanette, huh? Yeah. Are you from Jeanette, sir? Do, do, do you live in Jeanette? What? <laughs> I think I have my answer, sir. <laughs> well, this is the mayor of Jeanette here, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, I can tell you're facing the bar, sir. You're not even facing the show. Oh, there's liquor back there. <laughs> I'm glad I'm out of the house. This is. Uh, what, what is your name, sir? What is it? Moose. Yeah, good for you, Moose. Named after the animal? <laughs> yeah, and where are you, are you from, Jeanette Moose? Erwin. Uh, you're from... <laughs> I'm not sure, it sounded like you said heroin, but, um, <laughs> but whatever time you said, people hate it more than Cleveland. I don't know what... <laughs> is it any other town other than Jeanette? Is love Jeanette, any other town. We went to Butler the other day, we hate those people in Butler. <laughs> and, and Moose, what kind of work you doing? Railroad. Railroad. You're working on the railroad? Oh, good for you. How long have you been working on the railroad? All the 